got an amazing story to share with you. I understand you have some breaking news. How does it all play out? It's quite an adventure here at CBSN. Rivero, thank you for joining us. In a new interview with CBS News, President Trump is reasserting the unproven claim that his campaign was spied on by President Obama and Vice President Biden, defending his supporters' right to display Confederate flags at his rallies, and warns electing Joe Biden would send the country into an economic depression. When asked by senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge about the police killing of George Floyd and African Americans in general, the president deflected, saying white people are also seeing harm at the hands of police. Let's talk about George Floyd. You said George Floyd's death was a terrible thing. Terrible. Why are African Americans still dying at the hands of law enforcement in this country? And so are white people. So are white people. What a terrible question to ask. So are white people. More well, white people, by the way. More white people. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I spoke to Katherine Herridge about her interview and how the president sees his message on the coronavirus pandemic. Well, Tanya, we began with the president's weekend trip to Walter Reed, where he wore a face mask publicly for the first time. And I asked him whether he was sending a message. And when I pressed him further, he said people should follow the guidelines from the CDC as well as those of their governors and that he is okay with mask wearing. He refused to say that his position has evolved over time, but that he feels very comfortable telling people to wear masks as they see appropriate. We also asked him, I think, about the issue that is so pressing for families across this country because we're just about a month away from the traditional open of the fall semester. And here's that exchange on school openings. The Los Angeles School District is the latest and one of the largest in the country to say they're not going back to school in the fall. Mistake. What do you tell parents and teachers who feel that it's unsafe to go back? I would tell parents and teachers that you should uh, find yourself a new person, whoever's in charge of that decision, because it's a terrible decision. Because children and parents are dying from that trauma, too. They're dying because they can't do what they're doing. Mothers can't go to work because all of a sudden they have to stay home and watch their child and fathers. Uh, what's happening? You know, there's a tremendous strain on that whole side of the equation. So it's a balancing, it's a balancing act. It is a balancing act, but that we have to open our schools. Well, I also say a decision like that is politics because we're starting to do very well in the polls because I'm for law and order. I'm for strong business. Our jobs are coming back at a record level like never. We've never seen anything like it. Record level. We're heading up. It's turning out to be the V, just like I, I built it once before, the strongest economy ever. I'm doing it again. And they don't want that to happen because who's, they think who's the they? they is the Democrats. I also asked the president about the testing issue and a new report today from one of the major labs here in the United States that the average wait time is about seven days to get your results back. And the president told me that he's in favor of expanding what I would describe as fat fast-track testing results. These are rapid tests. They're not as accurate as laboratory tests, but you can get results on these on-site testing sometimes within 45 minutes to an hour, Tanya. And Catherine, some of the president's critics are claiming that he instigated a so-called culture war in response mm -hmm. to Black Lives Matter and some of the other movements that have been going on in this country. You touched on this with the president in your interview. What is his view on the matter? Well, I had a short exchange with the president on the issue of the battleground Confederate flag and how he felt that fit into the conversation about freedom of speech and how it was a symbol that was deeply hurtful to many Americans. Here's that exchange. President Trump, back in 2015, you said the Confederate battle flag belongs in a museum. Do you still believe that? All I say is freedom of speech. It's very simple. My attitude is freedom of speech. Very strong views on the Confederate flag. With me, it's freedom of speech, very simple. Like it, don't like it, it's freedom of speech. 
Would you be comfortable with your supporters displaying the Confederate battle flag at uh, well, political events? you know, it depends on what your definition is, but I am comfortable with freedom of speech. It's very simple. But you understand why the flag is a painful symbol for many people, because it's a reminder of sa slavery. Well, people love it, and I don't view... I know people that like the Confederate flag, and they're not thinking about slavery. I look at NASCAR. You go to NASCAR, you had those flags all over the place. They stopped it. I just think it's freedom of speech, whether it's Confederate flags or Black Lives Matter or anything else you want to talk about. It's freedom of speech. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more uh, about that issue for uh, a number of obvious reasons. And to the president's credit, we asked uh, several very direct questions of him, and he answered uh, all of our questions, Tanya. All right. Well, Catherine Herridge, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us into your interview with the president. We really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you. Nicole Killian and Caitlin Huey Burns join me now with more. Nicole is a CBS News correspondent with us from Washington. Caitlin is a CBSN political reporter here in New York. Welcome to you both. Wow, there is a lot to unpack after that interview with the president. But Nicole, let's start with you and with the president's comments on the police. So, you know, according to research by the CDC and John Jay College published in 2016, the president is correct. More white people are killed by police overall. But black people make up a smaller percentage of the population, so they are disproportionately more likely to be killed by police. What does the president's response tell us about how he plans to approach the issue of policing in this country? Well, I think it echoes some of what we've heard from other administration officials. I mean, when you look at other stats out there, for instance, at 2018, black men three and a half times more likely to be killed at the hands of law enforcement. Another study out in 2019 finding that one in 1,000 uh, black men are expected to die at the hands of police uh, over their lifetime. So the reality is that, you know, to your point, yes, uh, this is an issue of concern, and that is certainly an issue that has been fueling these protests we've seen in recent weeks and months in the wake of uh, George Floyd and even before that, I think, you know, in the president's response, as I mentioned, is kind of some of what you may have heard echoed from other administration officials. It was just a couple of weeks ago that CBS also had an interview with Attorney General William Barr and asked him if he believes there is systemic racism in law enforcement. And he said he really doesn't think so, uh, but he does certainly mm -hmm. understand uh, the concerns and the distrust that some have within the African-American community. So I think, you know, while we can't interpret the president's remarks, and he has to explain himself and what he meant by that, um, I do feel that that kind of echoes the general uh, sentiment that we've heard from other administration officials in the past on this issue. And then, Caitlin, in a similar vein, the president refused to disavow his supporters displaying Confederate flags at his rallies, citing freedom of speech. So. Caitlin, how might this stance impede his outreach to minority voters? Well, I certainly think it could impede that outreach, but I think it also demonstrates an instance in which the president is not only out of step with uh, most of the country, but also with members of his own base. I mean, NASCAR made big headlines by saying that they would not have the Confederate flag at events. Mississippi just uh, changed its state flag, uh, and Republican senators praised that decision. Uh, and as Herridge mentioned in her interview with the president, she said that uh, you know, you you believed in 2015 that the flag should be in a museum. So I think this is an instance where the president is out of step with even Republicans on this issue, and this, or some Republicans, some in his base. And this comes against the backdrop of uh, a changing view of race relations in this country. According to a CBS News polling taken last month, uh, they saw a, a change in attitude. In 2015, uh, a majority uh, of Americans Americans thought uh, that there was progress being made on race discrimination. Now, a majority say there isn't. Uh, a majority say that police are more likely to use uh, deadly force against a black person. Uh, and a majority disapprove of Trump's handling of race relations. Yeah, and uh, Nicole, the president once again, also in this interview, accused President Obama, and now specifically Vice President Biden, of spying on his campaign, you know, back in 2016. Is there any evidence at all to back this up? 
Yeah, and I don't know that I would read too much into that because these are claims that the president has spouted uh, time and again, whether it's on Twitter or in interviews or even, uh, you know, in other formats for that matter. Um, but, you know, there isn't uh, that much proof to back it up. I mean, certainly you'll recall even just, I want to say maybe it was about a month or so ago where, you know, he labels this as Obama gate and, you know, accused his predecessor of crimes without being able to specify what crime. So, you know, I think this is kind of more of the same that we have heard from this president. Uh, but yes, uh, really not that much proof back it up. That being said, you know, certainly when it comes to the Russia investigation, uh, you know, there were instances of uh, mishandling, uh, particularly by the FBI. And, um, you know, certainly that is something that has been detailed. But to the extent to which uh, the president was spied on, that has not been proven. And Caitlin, the president is claiming that Democrats want to keep schools closed specifically to harm him politically. He was saying to Catherine Herridge that children and parents are dying from trauma at home. It's sort of unclear as to exactly what he's referring to there, but how specifically would it benefit Democrats to not send children to school this fall? Yeah, it's peculiar phrasing, especially since uh, this is an issue that shouldn't be a political one. It has been pretty striking to see the issue of, of going back to school, the issue of wearing masks masks become uh, really political touchstones. Uh, but here we've seen over the past couple of days the president kind of refute CDC guidance or earlier CDC guidance about returning kids to schools. Uh, there are going to be a lot of difficulties and pose a lot of health risks, not only to students, of course, but to parents. And it's hard to find any parent who wants to send their kid to school in what could be an unsafe environment. And there is also the pressure uh, that that would put on teachers about whether to subject them to those conditions as well. Uh, and the uh, Department of Education hasn't really been able to give uh, clear guidelines about how to go about this. Uh, I will say that uh, this is an issue among Democrats when we're talking about the Depart Department of Education and Secretary um, uh, DeVos. Uh, this is an issue that really animates Democrats against her. On the campaign trail earlier this year, when I would be in early states, the mention of DeVos and her handling of the education department was something that really struck voters or Democratic voters uh, really personally. You saw a very negative, visceral reaction to her from them. And we've seen a lot of criticisms waged among Democratic lawmakers to DeVos and her handling of this reopening. But it is striking that this has become a political issue, especially uh, with so many uh, questions left unanswered and parents and students and teachers wondering uh, whether it is indeed safe to return to school. All right. I want to play one more clip from the president's interview, and this one is on trade negotiations with China. Let's listen. Is phase two of the trade talks with China dead? Uh, I'm not interested right now in talking to China. So is I've it always on had a tough on the back Look, we made a great oh. trade deal, oh. but as soon as the deal was done, the ink wasn't even dry. Mm -hmm and they hit us with the plague, okay? So right now, I'm not interested in talking to China about another deal. Nicole, this sounds like pretty big news to me. Do you want to break down why this is so significant? Well, look, the president has uh, certainly been very clear about his stance on China, you know, over the past couple of weeks uh, that he does have uh, an ax to grind with them. And it's not, I will say, I don't think it's the first time he has said that he doesn't want to talk to China. You know, I think his point is, and uh, look, we saw at the end of May, uh, the administration taking some pretty sharp retaliatory measures against China uh, for a number of things. Uh, obviously, you know, you'll recall the situation with uh, Hong Kong and the new uh, national security security legislation there, uh, which really was a touchstone for this administration and also sparked um, some of those retaliatory measures we saw. Also, uh, we know the administration is considering more and that the president uh, certainly uh, today may address some of that to a certain extent. Uh, but look, you know, whether it comes to issues of trade, whether it looks to, uh, comes to issues of how China has handled this violent virus, uh, rather, uh, or whether it comes to, uh, you know, China's handling of uh, trying to get at 
our, you know, intellectual property. You know, just recently we heard a White House advisor uh, raise this whole issue of TikTok and uh, whether or not that should potentially be banned and, that, you know, that the administration is concerned that China may be using that to, uh, you know, extract data, uh, that type of thing. You know, there are a number of gripes and issues that this administration has with China right now. So I say all that to say that uh, does certainly explain some of what you heard there from the president saying that he really is, is kind of done with them right now and, and doesn't really uh, want to move forward with them on trade. Obviously, significant because the president does like to do these trade deals, and it's certainly a big uh, part of his, uh, you know, legacy of achievements. That's kind of what he wants to pin his hat on, uh, but certainly a lot of frustration with China as well. And I think that's what you heard the president expressing there. All right. Well, Nicole Killian and Caitlin Huey Burns, thanks to both of you for joining us and breaking this down. We really appreciate it. And you can see more of Catherine's interview with President Trump tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on the CBS Evening News, 10 p.m. Eastern on CBSN, and tomorrow on CBS This Morning. Coming up after the break. President Trump is campaigning hard against his former attorney general in the Alabama Senate runoff. We'll have the latest on Jeff Sessions' race against former football coach Tommy Tuberville. Stay with us. You're streaming Red and Blue.